Mill assuming that she will continue living with us. Background F35 and my DHM43 are married for over 12 years and known each other for 16. DH has a job where we have to move every couple years and we have two DDs F5, F8. It took many years of DH and my mom F58 supporting me when I went back to school for postgrad and doctorate and now work full time. I lost my father due to sudden cardiac arrest just after I got married 12 years ago. He was just 52. My mom was with him on vacation and brought him home in an ambulance plus flight. Those long 16 plus hours in trauma was too much and my mom was now afraid of dark and was on anxiety medication, not to mention she was now hypotensive and fainted very often. It was the worst time for our family. I didn't want to leave my mom alone in her house. My brother had to eventually go back to his life in other country and DH insisted on my mom moving in with us and she did. We sold her house to extended family, mom invested the sum to buy a new one in future. Now coming to the actual issue, my in-laws live in the capital city, were never part of our lives and I just spoke to them on holidays and one or two visits per year. While dating, DH and I discussed if Eels will move with us in the future as it is common in our culture as parents get older. DH said they will live in their own home as Phil wants it that way and he is one calling all the shots. It was brought up once by Mill, she made huge cry but was shot down by Phil. DH is expected to manage everything, arrange all the assistance doctor visits help etc. They treat him like their property, never let him focus on his own family. I never really wanted to live with them since they only cared about DH as he is their only child. Mill never liked me one bit, right from crying on my wedding day. Dressing in same color as me on my wedding red, accidentally? Mentioning DH's ex in our conversations and compare me to her, finding flaws in everything I do, competing with me for DH attention, wearing my clothes, yes she actually took my clothes which I kept aside for donating, and wears them to this day, DH buys anything for me, she wants it too. Phil has his own issues but they are nothing compared to what drama my mill has to present. Mill stands outside our bedroom when we visit her and listen in, barge in whenever she wants keep knocking if it's locked, wants us to entertain. I have even caught Mill outside our bedroom in the middle of the night. She completely monopolizes the kitchen and every other aspect, never let me do anything. It's her way to feel needed and always the center of attention. I always felt like an outsider and just a guest. She even told me since her DS got married he doesn't sleep in her room when he visits and sleep with me in guest room yuck? Yes, Phil on a sofa bed. I agree in our country it's normal when visiting families, we sleep in one room, adjust on extra mattresses, but the way she said it made my skin crawl. DH always used to say it's for few days so I kept peace and just tolerated the visits. She calls him 6-7 times a day and when I asked her to limit the calls to 1-2 per day or let us call her, she denied outright. DH has told her to wait for his call, limits his time on phone, but no she doesn't even listen to him. Starts confrontation and then back to back calls start if DH ignores her calls. DH has failed in establishing boundaries from the start. Both pregnancies I have loads of stories where Mill made it all about herself. First pregnancy invited herself for 6 months and I was depressed all the time and second pregnancy I suffered from post eclampsia, and had a stroke which was a wake up call for my DH who was blinded by narcissistic Mill. I can write books on it but you get the gist. I went LC with Phil and NC with Mill. Mill offered many apologies when she saw DH supporting me with NC. It was all fake since she does this from beginning, play the victim, say sorry and acts like nothing happened. Before pandemic DH got orders to relocate to the same city as Eels. I was already dreading everything that's going to come. When pandemic hit, my Phil suffered from a heart attack, he had to have stents and needed care which was difficult to get in those days. I don't know what I was thinking when I offered him to move in with us, bi good game est mistake of my life. Mill came along obviously. What ensued if I write here, the post will turn into a saga, but worst 4 years of my life. I was verbally AMD mentally abused by my mill on a regular basis. DH was miserable too but torn as Phil needed us. They never went back to their home, got too comfortable and I cried myself to sleep more and more every passing day. Mill made my life a living hell, too many things and instances to list here. My mom just up and left and eventually bought herself a new place, she couldn't take my mill anymore. That was the last straw, it was me or mill, I packed my bags but DH finally got everything out to mill. He finally saw what it was doing to the kids and to me. Or at least that was what I thought. DH got us out to a new city. Most wonderful time of my life in recent past. It's been 6 months and Phil suffered another attack. DH is feeling guilty we were not there, Mill cries every day on phone and guilts him as if he is not doing enough as a DS. DH yesterday spoke to me about bringing them over, I have lost all my shit, I felt betrayed and I don't want to go through everything again. DH said he won't unless I say so. 
but it's a moral issue now and I hate that he is putting me in this position. What should I do? Do I let them her in my home again? No is a complete sentence. Unless you want to get divorced. Your marriage won't survive them yet again. Relationship with mom has been ruined. Buckle up, it's a bit of a long rant story and I'm sorry for the length. I've kept it all bottled up for a while. Too long didn't read at the end to preface this, I'm the oldest but this is not my mom's first grandchild. My sister lives with my parents and she has a child. My mom and I 28 F used to be close, like talk every day close. That is until I gave birth to my first child. I had to have a C-section for medical reasons and I specifically told everyone that I didn't want visitors until the late afternoon after I had some time to recover and spend time with my husband and new baby. Mom said she would be in the waiting room just in case something happened and my baby and I were split up. I said fine which in hindsight was probably a mistake but no visits until the afternoon. The day comes and guess who shows up to my room 20 minutes before surgery? Yeah. Before we can even tell her to get out the nurses show up to start prepping me. It takes 10 minutes to get her to leave. I asked my nurse to put a no visitor notice for me at the front desk and she even gives me a code phrase to use in case I ever need to kick someone out again. My mom took that as a personal offense against her. I messaged her telling her it went okay and we're recovering. She proceeds to try and guilt me to let her come back there mind you at this point it had been 30 minutes since I was in the operating table and I just hand my phone to my husband. Mom eventually leaves, but not before more guilting and crying. To her credit, the next day she does ask to come and visit. We're discharged and my mom, who was so excited about the birth of this child, barely comes to visit in the following weeks, and she usually only gives like a 10 minutes notice if she wants to come over. Which I've had to tell her no, and to come the next day which she never does. Then she expects me to bring my now one month old to a birthday party for my 10 years old sibling. I can see the disappointment in her face when I show up alone. We start talking and I tell her that it's been a little rough especially with the crying at 2 am, and she immediately says well I could be helping you but you don't let me come over and keep telling me no which pisses me off. I tell her I've never said you can't come over, and always give an alt time. Which she says well your time isn't always convenient for me and it's hard to pack up. I just stop arguing because it's obvious she was going to play the victim. Over the next few months I always initiate the visits, and not once does she offer help. Before I gave birth I had asked her to watch the baby 3 days a week when I go back to work and my husband works in the office. I even said I would pay her. Which wouldn't have been an issue because she watches my sister's kid and has been since they were born. However, mom accepted a job to be a clerk. So now we had to scramble to find childcare thank you Mill for stepping in. My sister wasn't affected since she works night shift and could watch her kid during the day until she needed sleep then mom would watch. Then comes Christmas. She got super upset that I wouldn't wake up my baby he had missed a few naps so she could hold him to the point she stopped talking and looked pissed at me the entire time. We were literally coming up the next day to do Christmas with them and the rest of the family, she could hold them all she wanted to. This whole time she's posing as a loving involved grandma online and gets my baby clothes that says grandma's best friend and stuff along that line. Every time I see them I get a bad taste in my mouth and I don't put my baby in them. Also, sister told me mom had told my aunt the day before my c-section that even though I had said no visitors she was going to show up anyway and I would just have to deal with it. Mom apparently pulled the same and more things with my sister but she had never told anyone how bad it was. At this point I'm still the one planning visits, and trying to make it so my child has a relationship with both sets of grandparents, even though nearly that she is involved in anything just gives me a visceral reaction. But I know that if I call her out she will play the victim and act like she did nothing wrong. What am I supposed to do? Too long didn't read mom showed up at my birth even though I told her not to and it spiraled from there to where if I have to deal with her at all I dread it. But I still try for the sake of my child. Take a step back from her, and let yourself breathe for a while. She expected you to deal with her disrespecting your needs by accepting her bullying. She definitely effed around and found out she was not the boss of you. Let her play victim. Your sister knows the truth, and there is no reason to not expose your mom's behavior. And what do you mean when you say for the sake of my child? Is there some wishful thinking going on? Does your child need to be her next generation of victim? This is how you deal with an EM. Speak another language. Long time lurker, first time poster. Sorry for the long post. But this is a funny one. I always thought these crazy people who don't mind their own business must be a rare breed and that I would never encounter one of them, but somehow I did. So a little bit of background before I start, I was born in Pakistan, but came to Canada when I was 3, but by that time, I could already speak in Urdu, Punjabi and Hindi the languages are fairly similar in many regards, and then I came to Canada and English was my fourth language. As I grew up, I also learned Arabic, 
French and Japanese to varying competencies, but all within the realm of conversational. Having grown up in Canada, I have no accent when I speak in English, so you wouldn't be able to tell me apart from a Caucasian person if you spoke with me over the phone. But also having learned so many languages, I'm able to pronounce a lot of sounds fairly accurately, so I sound authentic in all languages that I speak into all but native speakers. Most of the languages that I know sound different enough from each other that someone that doesn't know them can still tell that the language is different. I've traveled back home to Pakistan a few times, and I would always encounter those beggars who come with elaborate stories. Like, my wife is sick and she needs surgery, and I managed to get money for that, but I need money for the flight to reach her etc. I came up with a fun counter to that which was that I would act like I didn't understand them at all and would start speaking in a different language that they wouldn't know. Japanese was my go-to language while in Pakistan. The reaction those people would have was quite hilarious. As per apparently new rules, instead of acronyms, I'll use fake names. I'll keep them all five letter names so the columns line up decently enough. So anyway, onto my story now. The cast Karen the star of the show Jimmy Karen's husband, and a decent human being Zarif me wifey my wife sing restaurant manager so my wife and I were at an Indian restaurant in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada enjoying our dinner and having a conversation. We speak in a mix of Urdu and English, just mixing with whatever feels easy. To someone listening in, they would be able to understand enough to figure out what we are talking about in most cases. We were sitting in a booth table so it was only open from one side. Karen and her family Jimmy and her two daughters that looked like they were in their early teens. We're sitting at an open table with an empty table between us. My wife is Pakistani like me, and what some Pakistanis like to do is eat rice with their hands. I prefer a spoon myself, but at this time my wife was eating with her hands. Apparently this Karen got offended at seeing my wife eat with her hands. When she came over, I started speaking in different languages acting like I didn't understand what she was saying in English. I'll translate what I said and put in parentheses which language I said it in. Here's how it went Karen walks over to our table with a sour expression on her face. Jimmy calls to her telling her to sit back down and leave us alone, but she ignored him. She addresses my wife directly. Karen what's wrong with you? Can't you eat your food in a civilized manner like the rest of us? Zara Fordu huh? What do you want? Can't you see we're eating? Karen looks at me with surprise. Karen what did you just say? Zara Fordu to wifey don't talk to her in English. Just do what I'm doing. Zara Fordu to Karen you're just a crazy woman, go sit back down. Karen why aren't you speaking in English? My wife starts smiling and I try hard to keep a straight face. Wifey you're do we are just enjoying our meal, why don't you go and sit down? Karen the first just heard you speaking in English, I know you can talk in English Zara Fordu yeah, I can but I choose to not do so. Wifey you're do to Zara if I think she's getting upset. Zara Fordu to wifey I know, that's what makes this so much fun. Karen stop it talk in English like I heard you before as Arif Japanese so you are listening in on our conversation? Don't you have any manners? Karen wait, that's some other language now. What the hell is this? Jimmy leave them alone Karen, they don't speak English. Karen I know they do they're just pretending not to. Jimmy it doesn't matter, just sit down. I start waving toward her table. Zarif Japanese that's right, go back to your table you loud cow. Jimmy Karen they aren't doing anything wrong. Leave them alone. Karen she's eating with her hands I can't let the girls learn her uncivilized way Zarif Hindi to wifey start licking your fingers. My wife starts licking the rice on her right hand off the top parts of her fingers and that makes Karen rage even more. Karen oh my god look at how gross she is being Jimmy stop looking at her if you don't like it then Zarif Arabic hey you dumb bitch, do you behave this way everywhere you go? Karen he changed languages again I know he did his accent changed Zarif Japanese yep, and I can keep changing. Karen speak in English Jimmy you must have heard them wrong. They don't know English. Leave them alone. Karen then why are they living here? They don't deserve to live here if they don't know English. I was having a hard time keeping a straight face, so I disguised it by raising my voice and appearing angry. I gestured towards her and then pointed at her table. Zara Farabic are you so dumb you can't even listen to your husband? Go sit down and stop embarrassing yourself Karen you don't deserve to be here get out at this point. The restaurant's manager Singh shows up to see what all the commotion was about. He's an Indian guy with a pretty heavy accent when he spoke in English, so I knew he'd speak either Hindi or Punjabi. Sing excuse me, can you please keep your voice down? What is going on here? Karen this woman is eating with her hands and it's disgusting she's corrupting my children with her barbaric ways. Sing ma'am, there are no rules that forbid her from eating with her hands. Please leave them alone or I'll have to ask you to leave. Now Jimmy gets up and comes over to where Karen is. Jimmy sit down Karen, 
You've embarrassed yourself enough this is why I can't take you anywhere Zaraf Punjabi ignore this dumb cow, her brain is smaller than a ladu and Indian sweet the manager starts laughing at my comment and Karen gets even redder in the face since she probably she thinks we're making fun of her. Karen all of you should go back to your country Jimmy just takes her arm and leads her back to their table and sits her down, telling her to shut up. Her daughters look like they want to sink into the floor from embarrassment. I ramble a few more sentences in varying languages as a kind of venting before my wife tells me to just leave it alone. We finish our dinner about 10 minutes later, with Karen glaring at us the whole time. I go pay the bill and as we are walking out of the restaurant, we pass near Karen's table. I call out to Jimmy in perfect English with no accent while smiling and I give him a wave. Zarf hey buddy, I hope you enjoy your dinner have a good night Karen's eyes bulge as she screams. Karen I knew it see they know English she tried to stand up suddenly but instead ended up falling over backwards in her seat. My wife and I left the restaurant laughing before she could do anything else. TLDR Karen gets upset that my wife is eating with her hands. I respond to her in various languages she doesn't understand. Hilarity ensues. Added wow thanks to all of the kind souls who gave me a platinum, six golds and four silvers I never got them before and I'm really thankful added to I changed the acronyms to fake names for easier reading. Intelligence 100 Destruction 100 Speech.